what is up guys it is me fluffy um welcome back to the fluff cast um i really wanted to talk about something um so i played football this last football season um and as a senior that was very heart-wrenching um it was the very first time I'd ever played football. I mean, I played, I think, a season of flag football. It was the very first time that I ever played uh, actual football on a high school level with a team. And um, I wish that I had... If I could go back and change something, I would have done it earlier. Instead of waiting till my senior year. Um, so my entire life, I haven't like, I, I've hated football. And I didn't like football players. They were annoying. I thought they were stuck up. I mean, and a lot of them are. Um, and I, uh, I didn't like them. Hands down. I didn't like football. Didn't like them. I didn't understand the game. And there are a few things I didn't understand. Um, and there are a few things that I did and whatnot. Anyway, I wanted to talk about some benefits that I... Some things that I learned from football. Um, and just three things. Uh, I, maybe more, maybe less. But so far, three things. Um, so the first thing is, before I get started, I want to thank my coaches, uh, my the other people that helped out, the water girls, the uh, bus driver. I want to thank everyone that helped, even the players. I want to thank you guys because y'all made this the best season ever. Um, even though we were a first-year program, so we didn't do too well. We won one out of our ten games, which sucks. But the reality of the situation was is we didn't have the – the things that other teams had. We didn't have a proper weight room. We, The school kind of treated us like a, we're going to test it out this year. Probably it's not going to work out kind of a thing. And, um, yeah. So we, didn't, we were, like, if you looked at it from an equipment and training standpoint, we were not as good as any other team. Uh they would have been way better. But considering that we still went out and kicked butt as hard as we could every single game, never backing down, it sucks that we only won one game. But if you watch those games, you could see we should have won or you could have you you would have thought that we would have won, but we ended up not winning. Um we would always do really good, but when it came to a few key things, we would end up like shooting ourselves in the foot, and that was hard. But anyway, thank you to everyone for making it such a great season. I want to personally thank Coach Cal for being for leaving the I think it was Utah State that he worked at to come coach high school football. Um, I want to thank. Coach Hardcastle, personally, for being such a such a <laughs> crazy, energetic dude. Uh, I love him. He's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Oh my goodness, this man. I can't remember how old he is, but he it's like he's one of the boys, one of the like teenage boys that's just partying and having fun, and he seems to always have fun and be happy no matter what he's doing. I don't think I've ever seen Coach Hardcastle in a bad mood. And even if he is in a bad mood, he tries very hard not to show it. And that's amazing. Um, but yeah, no, Coach Hardcastle and Coach Cal, two very important people. Um, Coach Brumbaugh, he's, he's a pretty, pretty funny guy. Uh, he's also very, like, tall and big. And he's, like, very strong. He's a very good lineman, lineman coach. Uh, I love him. He taught me a lot about the game, taught me a lot about life. And, um, I think between Cal, Coach Cal and him, I, 
honestly would say he probably believes that I could do great things more than Coach Cal, but Coach Cal really did believe in me. They all believed in me, and I'm I'm not a good football player. I've never played before, and it was really cool watching them help me and work with me and teach me how to play the game and how to get better, and I, yeah. Coach Meachin, we didn't get off on a very good start. We weren't very clicky-clicky at any point. Coach Meachin was, I believe, the quarterback and quarterback and running back, maybe linebacker coach. I don't remember, but I know for sure the quarterback um, coach. Uh, I think he was straight out of high school, actually, uh, coming to play for us. Um, I think he played for Hillcrest. I don't remember, uh, but he was their star quarterback. He was, he's a freaking good quarterback. He's a good good kid. Uh, we're practically the same age, so I feel like it's okay for me to call him a good kid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so thank you to him. Uh, thank you to Coach Budico for, for believing me in me too. Um, and I felt like Budico and I connected because through the coaching staff, he was – he had never – I don't think he'd ever played football, and if he did – it, it's been a while, and he never coached, and watching him grow as a coach was amazing, and he helped me, uh, yeah, I love Coach Peter Kofer. Um let's see, who else we got, we got Coach Gardner, he was a really cool dude, uh, he had to teach a lot, so he wasn't really, because he taught at a different school, wasn't really there that often, but he was a really cool dude, really funny, really helped me when I was down, um, See who else we got. I don't remember. Uh, Coach, what's his name? Sim Simmons. I don't know. Really buff, bald dude. He was really cool. Uh, kind of funny. Uh, we had another coach. Uh, he was fired early on, but his son was really cool. Uh, I really enjoyed hanging out with him and his son on the bus rides over because he would always stick in the bus with us. Uh, Hector, that was his, uh, that's the guy that I'm talking about right now. That was his name. Uh, he was really cool. Um, who else? We got Cal, Hardcastle, Rumba, Budokofer, Meechin. I feel like I'm forgetting someone important. We had a kicking coach that came in for the last few games. He was, he was chill. Uh, he was Coach Hardcastle's buddy. Let's see, who else? feel like I'm forgetting someone. Um, Coach Moody, for sure. Uh, she, we call her Mama Moody. She was kind of the team mom. She did everything for us. So many things that we didn't know about behind the scenes. Um, she collected our money for paying for meals over the trips. Um, she helped organize events. She, she, would, she was the backbone. Um, without her, there probably wouldn't be a football team, or at least... The football team as we know it. Um, she was very rudimentary. She was very fundamental. That's the word. Fundamental part in this. Um, yeah. Um, I swear I'm forgetting someone. And if you're a coach and I forgot you, I'm sorry. My memory's just been a little foggy. Yeah, I think I got all of them. Um... Oh, Coach Gay. Uh, he was really cool. He was there during the summer. He's short, buff, bald, and very scary. Uh, very in, in, uh, intimidating dude. Uh, off the field, great guy. On the field, scared the living crap out of me. Uh, all the time. Um, like, this dude is one intimidating mother freaker um but yeah no um the water girls or what did he call them uh help uh, he called them the girls but he had another title for them uh manager there we go the managers uh lauren uh serena mm, addy 
What's the other girl's name? I never remembered her name. I could never remember her name. I don't know what it was. I tried to learn it. I did. I promise. But the other the other one, uh, she was really nice. All of them were really nice. Um, it's funny. Uh, Lauren actually had graduated the year before, but her brother Vincent was on the team with me, and he's a senior as well. But she came and helped. That was really cool. Serena is actually now Vinny's girlfriend. That's a funny story. Uh, I'll tell you all about it another day. Um... But yeah, uh, she, she, they're really nice. Addie was really funny. We really connected. Uh, she helped me through some stuff. I'm not going to lie. She was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, uh, and then the other one, she came in later. That's probably why I could not remember her name for the life of me. Uh, I think she showed up for camp and then for the rest of the season. Why can't I remember her name? I'm forgetting so many things, guys. It, it's sad. But, listen. On to the three things, because I want to hurry before this video gets too long. So, number one. Um, I learned that life, you can't go through it on your own. Much like football or any other team game, you can't play football without every member of your team. Um, every member of your team counts. Uh, the quarterback may seem like the t one guy, the one most important player uh, in life. You'll see people like this all the time, the CEO of a great company. But that company and the CEO couldn't be where he's at without the help of all of his smaller employees. So much like the quarterback seems like the most important player, the simple lineman is just as much of an important player, if not more, than the quarterback. Um, and I might be speaking with a little bias because I was a lineman. But listen, it's true. Everyone's important. Everyone. Um, so you can't go life. You can't go through life. You can't go life. There you go. You can't go through life without other people. Life is not a single player game. It is a team game, and there is no I in team. Now, the second thing I learned is that life and football and everything will break you down physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, all of the least. It will break you down. But also what football teaches you is how to get back up. Every day going to practice and fighting and knowing that I personally was fighting a losing battle against my other teammates because they were all better than me in football. Uh, three guys, uh, won't mention names, all showed up late. First day all got starting positions. And that was crushing to me and crushing to a lot of players because two of the three guys took positions that I was starting in. And that was hard. That was physically and emotionally and spiritually hard and all of it. It was so hard for me. I couldn't, I almost quit because of it. And I'm glad that I didn't, but I almost did. But luckily, football does teach you how to get back up and how to make it through the grind. And with the mentioning of the grind, we're getting to our third and final topic. Life is a grind. Football is a grind. And what a grind is, is it's you doing hard things, the same things, boring things, rough things, tough things, fun things, all of it. It is doing all of it and just going through it, trying to make it through to the next day, trying to make it to the end of practice, trying to fight your way to the top, just like everyone else. And the grind, I think, over everything else that I learned from football, the grind is probably the most important one that I learned. Because if football never taught me how to grind... Grind with the boys, grind alone, just grind in general. If football never taught me how to grind, I know 100% that 
that the rest of my life would probably be a lot harder and a lot more challenging and a lot more confusing if football never taught me how to grind the grind. And kind of a little sidestep off of the off of number three. <clears throat> Sorry. My throat, very dry. <clears throat> if football never taught me how to do the grind, life would be harder and all that. But as a sidestep down, it, uh, it taught me to grind with other people. Find people that you can share your burdens with and that they can share their burdens with you. And you can all just try to make it through this long thing that we call life. This very hard thing that we call life. And that's what football taught me. Football taught me also how to respect people that you don't necessarily like. Taught me how to respect people that you don't that you don't function with normally. Um, I'll give an example of this. Uh, one of the three kids that came to our... Uh, or that came in, uh, I'm trying to put this in a way so people won't figure out who he is. Uh, one of our team teammates got injured, and uh, but up until the point where he got injured, we didn't really like each other, like at all. We butted heads all the time. It was crazy. And to be honest, I started avoiding him. I didn't like him. But the brotherhood that football causes you to have, it forces you to have it. Because if you don't have brotherhood, you're not going to win your game. Your strongest, the point where you are at your strongest is when your weakest player is as strong as everyone else. The point where your weakest link, link is your weakest player. And... If you don't have good brotherhood, but you have all the talent in the world, you're still not going to play very well together. And you're still going to lose. Because you didn't, you're missing the one thing that holds the entire thing together, and that's brotherhood. It's the respect that you have for the boys and girls if you play co ed. We played co ed. We had one girl on our team. Her name was Lauren. She's really cool. Anyway, um,. Brotherhood and respect are very important, and that's also what football taught me. But with the kid that got injured, we didn't really... In fact, this happened with a few of my teammates that got injured, and a few that didn't, but basically it all went the same. We weren't really connecting until something happened where we just had to grind together, and the grind brought us closer together. And it brought us all onto the same level. And me is probably the weakest link on the team because everyone disregarded me except for Brumba, Cal, and the coaches, all the other coaches. All the players disregarded me. First day of football, I showed up and everyone was like, you're going to quit. You're not going to amount to anything on this team. And I fought. I did. Uh, I made it to the end of the summer, and everyone was like, I can't believe that you made it to the end of the summer. None of us thought that you were going to. Well, no one said that, but you could tell that they were all surprised. And then, all of a sudden, first game rolls around. Everyone thought I was going to quit. The second game, third, fourth, fifth, all the way up to the final game of the season. And guess who was playing in the final play? I was. Everyone else on this team felt like everyone else thought that they belonged on the team. And if we're being honest, I didn't feel that way. Except maybe when the coaches talked to me and showed me respect and showed me that they cared. I didn't feel this way. I didn't feel that I belonged on the team 
until after the season was over. Until the final play of the last game. And that's when it really hit home. That's when all of my other teammates, all of us who had previously had squabbles and just hated each other, that's when it clicked. That's when they realized that they were losing us seniors. And that's when we became a brotherhood. In my opinion. Obviously, everyone else felt like they were a part of the brotherhood up until, like, forever. But I truly didn't feel like I was a part of something until the last play of the last game was over. And we all just looked at each other and went, Wow. It's over. And now realizing immediately after that that I would personally never play football again because I'm obviously not good enough to go play college and I'm not good enough to hit NFL. It kicked it kicked in hard that I would never clean up again. I would never strap on my pads or my helmet that would be the last time that I would have that feeling. <laughs> and I wanted to thank my coaches again and the players again and the, the managers again, the principal, everyone who was a part of the football everything I want to thank you even though during the season I felt like it was horrible and I hated it afterwards I now see that that was probably the best few months of my entire life leading up to this point now that it's over I'm going to miss it. I will. I wish... I, I'll i tell anyone this. I legit wish every single day that I can clean up and hit the field one last time. But I can't. Because I'm not going to be playing college. Because obviously they're not going to put me on their team. I'm not going to be playing in the NFL because no one wants me. I know that's for a fact. So, it really hits home every time I think about it, or every time I think about football or see the boys. It hurts knowing that I will never touch that field again. Knowing that me and my opponent are never going to clash shoulder to shoulder, head to head, ever again. And that's another thing that football teaches you. It teaches you how to love something that you hate. Because up until I played football, and even up until after, I either really hated it or really disliked it. So thank you to everyone. Thank you so much for making this the best season of my life. The best game, the best year, the best everything. Thank you for giving me this experience. Because honestly, if our high school hadn't gotten a football team, I would have never played football. And I'm so glad because my entire life, everyone's like, you're built for football, go play. And I was like, no, I hate it. But I'm so glad that I decided to give it this one last chance. Thank you. And goodbye. This is Fluffy. See you next time on the Fluffcast.